What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel today and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about extracurriculum activities. So it's basically part two. And I'm going to put a card right here for part one, so if you want to watch it before watch this one, go watch it and come back to this one. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel today. And if you're new here, my name is Shin Su Hwa and I'm a freshman studying in business from University of Washington. So before we talk about anything, I just wanted to show you guys something because today I got a mask from my school UW and I thought it's just cool so I just wanted to show you guys real quick. I know I'm gonna go back to the topic as soon as possible so just stay with me. Oops. See? You guys like it? I like it. Or can you hear me even? Hopefully. But anyway, okay, so let's go back to our topic. So before we start talking about our main topic today, I have a few questions right here for you guys just to look at and remember. And I think these questions are important because these questions are the ones that you will be answering while applying to colleges for senior right now and beyond. Extracurriculum activities is going to be even more extra important because a lot of colleges are going test optional due to the global pandemic. So please make sure you know all these questions, but hear me out. I'm not saying that you have to do certain stuff just to impress your college admission people and people around you. It has to come from your heart, the activities that you want to participate in or initiate. If those activities are ones that you really like that fulfill your passion and you can use those activities to answer those questions that I just put here, then you'd be a win-win situation. But if not, it's totally okay. But in most cases, if you do something you really enjoy and you really love, these questions will just follow along. So in my case, I never knew these questions or any type of college admission process tips or tricks because I was new here and, and nobody around me really went through those process before. When I faced these questions in my senior year, I didn't have any problems with it because all the extracurricular activities, awards, other stuff that I've done during my high school year, I did it because I loved it. I did it because I really truly enjoyed it. Here one thing to remember is always follow your heart and your gut feeling because that is the best solution for you and that is the way to go. So I was doing a quick research about what college admission people will look at this year or beyond because from now on, college application process is going to be different. A lot of colleges are going test optionals not only this year but also next year, the year before and for UC colleges, they are going test optional until 2025 and they're gonna get rid of testing requirements at all after 2025, that's what they said. Knowing that there's a change in college admission process, what should we expect now? So I have summarized the entire research that I've done into three words. Resilience, creative, and involvement. So due to go pandemic, the typical normal extracurricular activities that everybody did, such as volunteer work, clubs, and sports, those are not available anymore. So that is why you have to be creative to stand out. And the other two ideas, resilience and involvement, are the way to show your dedication toward your passion. You're being resilient during this uncertain time to do stuff that you really like. And you're involving yourself into other organizations virtually, remotely, or doing something not only for yourself but for others because you enjoy it and because you have the dedication for it. But how do you show these ideas within yourself to universities? Well, I didn't really know how to do it because I've never done it either. For my college application process, it was traditional college application process. So I conducted a small research, just reading over a few articles about how college admission will be different this year and some news articles from Ivy League schools, UC schools and other colleges around the US and there are actually a lot of extracurricular activities out there that you can do remotely to show your creativity, involvement and resilience. So let's talk about creativity first. So here what creativity means is how you get the most out of the resources you have at the moment. Because obviously we don't have a lot of resources anymore. And so that is why college admission people are mainly looking at your creativity to stand out as a student. And after reading over like 10 articles, maybe maybe 15 articles, I have summarized four different extracurricular activities that you can do at home. This does not mean that the ones that I'm saying right now are the only one that you can do. There are millions of things, thousands of things that are out there you can choose from. And you don't even have to choose from those topics or those choices. You can make your own unique extracurricular activities because that's what it is all about. Your unique activity 
in your creativity and your innovative mindset. So the first thing is to learn a programming language. And you might be like, um, you're not gonna major in CS, you're gonna major in like nursing, business, but why do I need to learn a programming language? Nowadays, it's all about computer, it's all about internet. If you have a business, you're gonna have a website. If you wanna do marketing, you're most likely gonna start with your social media marketing and digital marketing. So you already know everything we're doing right now or every career field that you will be doing in the future will be somehow related to computer, internet, or coding. So I thought it was a good idea to learn the basic fundamental idea of coding because I'm sure that those things that you learn will not only leverage all your new knowledge, but also help you in the long run. There are a lot of free resources out there you can use such as EDX or you can buy a book and you can self-teach yourself and that's what I've been trying to do during this past six months of quarantine. The second one that I found online was remote research. So basically it doesn't have to be a huge research. It could be just a small things about like the topics or concepts that you always want to know deeper or the questions that you always had in yourself that you want to dig deeper. And I personally think that right now is a great time to do a research because we have a lot of free time. If you take advantage of those factors, there are a lot of times you can actually spend for your research. And if you need resources, you have Google or you have ebooks from your local libraries. And my favorite thing about research in general is that by doing research, your intellectual curiosity will grow. The field of knowledge that you will gain as a result of a research is huge. And that is why I recommend a lot of people to do a research no matter how small it is or how big it is because it will help you in the long run as well. The point here is we're looking at long run, okay? We're not looking at short-term goals like a month or two. We're looking at a year, five years or ten years. And that is the key point here because we're not doing this just for colleges. I mean, that's a part of it, but we're doing this because of our own goods. Make sure you keep that in your mind. And so far, if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this as well. And let's talk about third one. I thought there was no opportunities out there for volunteering anymore because I thought all the volunteering is in person. But actually, there are a lot of busier volunteerings. And I found one website and one app. So I'm gonna introduce you guys to those website and a map. The website is called Amnesty Decoders. So this website is a way for you to help research to expose human rights violation with a global network of volunteers throughout the world. And the one app I found is a brilliant app. It's called Be My Eyes. So where you can volunteer to assist blind and low vision users through this mobile app. So how this app works basically is that so when low vision people or blind people are going outside the house or even inside the house, if they need any help like trying to find something or look at something, you will be there for them through the app and you will help them live a more independent life. And I think it's a very good volunteer opportunity and I think it's just great to help people those in need. And I'm gonna put the link down below with more links to find more digital volunteering opportunities. So check my description out if you have time as well. And if you don't like those links that I put down below, just easily Google digital volunteering and there's gonna be thousands and millions of opportunities out there you can find and join. So lastly, the fourth one is to be creative with whatever you wanna do. There were so many things on the website or on the articles that I found that I couldn't really choose my fourth one. So that's why I said let's be creative. So for example, if you wanna have a virtual internship, so what I would do if the company that you wanna work for as an intern is not hiring, cold call them, cold email them until they reply. When you get the reply from them, that's your chance to convince them. If they don't want any paid interns, you could be their unpaid interns. It doesn't matter because doing internship, whether you're getting paid or not, you're still getting the experience and that is what's important. Because having a lot of experience, in my opinion, is really important to succeed. And there are other things such as you can create a Zoom meeting weekly or bi-weekly with people who you can help. So for example, if you're really good at math, you want to help people with math, then you can maybe create a Zoom meeting with people who need help in math and you can help them every week. So extra curriculum, it doesn't have to be something fancy. And volunteering, it doesn't have to be something fancy as well. It's just all about how you can help other people with the things that you have or you, how you can spend your time to get more things from other people. So if you can do either of them, it's good. If you can do both of them, that's perfect. And one thing I was actually thinking about doing this year was I want to make a Discord with a lot of people, maybe from YouTube and with my actual friends because online schools, it's gonna be tough, right? And I want to have some kind of platform where we can just talk about our stress, 
our concern, or our worries. And if we have some resources that we want to share, we can share. And if we can help each other out, we can help each other out. If you think that's a good idea, please leave a comment down below. And let me know if you want to join if I were to make one. And if a lot of people want to join, I will probably make one sooner or later. So just let me know down in the comment area. Alright guys, so that was it for today's video. Those were the four things that I found online that I really wish I'd know before this quarantine started. One thing to remember from this video is don't do stuff because you want to impress college people. Do stuff that you want to do. Do stuff that you enjoy and you love because that way the college admission people will see your passion and will see your dedication and they will choose you. Trust me on that one. So I really hope that this video helped you a lot. And if this video was helpful at all, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. So if you have any questions about just anything in general, you can always DM me on my Instagram. I have my personal one and I have my YouTube one. It doesn't matter which one you DM me through. I reply to both of them as soon as possible. Or you can also leave a comment down below. And I think I reply to the comment faster. So maybe choose to comment down below. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I hope you guys have the great rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye bye.